mouth, and I'm going to get spit on. Be on the fish. Turns you on. <laughs> so. Next. <laughs> Let's see, it looks like I'm going to get covered on that. Uh, Is it this one or the other one? Aha, that one. Push the suit. Can I move it again? Aha, uh -huh. is this. Mm, go around now. That's all uncomfortable. Something in the broken stone. Got a big key. No, yeah, no, that's actually a puzzle. Jeez. Oh, yeah, um, a tremor. I have no quotes for Hunter. Safe.
Oh. Uh, Helena. Well then. Keith? Keith, are you okay? Are you hurt? Wow, this is wow. I'm fine. What about you? Keith, Keith. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Helena, your leg's wounded. Hold on, I'll get over there. Keith, I'm fine. I'll be fine. There's nothing to worry about. Uh, I think this is the only time they ever talk after all this happens. Helena? Wait, Helena, I'll be right there. Don't move from that spot. I'm just gonna move. I'm fine. I swear. I'll be fine. Wait for me, Keith. I'll... Don't worry. I'll... Hello. Yep. Hmm. Well, that's new. I was on the. Okay. I finally don't know what to do with this rope. God. <laughs> this is bugging me so much. Yeah. And then. Hey. Right. I had to go up here. Uh, the rope was supposed to be used in this hole the whole time. Uh, go down the hole. Where am I? Ah, uh, this is up. That's messed up. <laughs> so why, 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 why? Why? Okay. Wow, I'm I'm mad at that. I am mad. All right, what the heck does this tape have? That I don't know. Wait. Which one she's in? Ah, oh, so that's how I got broken. <laughs> Here's Johnny. Oh, he got her. Oh, he didn't. Okay. <laughs> I. <laughs> that's the last where the door was cracked open. Sheesh. I didn't have the time to do all this. Alright, um. Yes, let's work at the key. Give me the key! I just gotta wait for the music box. This is not to read. Yep, yep, yep. Keep. Thank you. All right, now I need to go to the clown. <laughs> Keep the key. And now the piano. Don't look at the cards. Don't look at the cards. Don't look at the cards. Uh, in the front. David, let me your lighter. Stay here. Stand by the painting and keep a lookout. Call for me if you see anything strange. Like the boogeyman. Alright, this fire. Just give me the page. Yep. Hey, detective.
picked. Man comes out of nowhere. Then I go out, and then Dave will say like, "I don't know what you know." So I see him come out. All right. Don't mind me, guys. Just gonna. It's like why? I come when she's alive, they become they get tired and sleepy. But when she's close to death, they just kill her off. That's some bull. Footsteps. I thought I need the rope here. David, let me ask a favor. My neck's on a break. Come on, cricket man. Hey, quit shaking. Don't you work out at all? Why are you trying to get up there anyway? That big headed freak. He's always vanishing when there's no way out and appearing from nowhere, too. He's clearly using routes we don't know about. I need to learn more about them. This wall's been painted over, so I'm sure there's a path up ahead. That doesn't explain using me as a footstool. Climb up there and get your weight off my shoulders. Lance could have worked, but I wouldn't push a wounded guy. And for your information, only 3% of that weight is fat. So excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> Toss me your lighter. I'll look ahead. Don't move from that spot. Shout for me if anything happens. Okay. Ah, <sighs> phone. Uh, in here? What was in here? Oh, yeah, no, not there. Yeah, this is where I found Elena. Isn't this? Ah. Interesting. Is it this room? It's this room. God dang. Alright, um. Hmm. All about dick. Uh, Dick. Dick. I did. I would not have known about that. Ah! Don't move. You're under arrest. Ah, this is where I'm gonna actually catch him. This is interesting. <laughs> uh, your wifey's got a good butt on her. Hey. Really makes me want to chase after her. Hey, buddy, calm down. Where is she? Where? Ah, uh, detective. Uh, how careless. Trying to take me on in such close quarters. He's got a taser? Dang. Wow. I hate to say such a rude thing to a detective, but not really. Dummy. <laughs> wow. No way. Keith, my poor darling. What the hell? You watched me as I wallowed in the depths of despair. 
And there you stood, with your back against the edge. What? Now, it's time that you finally learn. Excuse me? You need pride. You need peace. So go ahead. Take it all. But don't you see? In the end, there will be nothing left of you. What? <laughs> I'm so confused. Alright, um... I have, uh, I need that. Aha. Uh -huh. Scrub paper and nicely record or something scribbled on the paper. You just want to hear her. Uh, where is this? Who are you? What's going on? Hello, Miss Baring. Who? Call me Boogie, ma'am. I'm about to begin a game befitting such a joyful night. I'd appreciate your participation as well. Hmm. Run for me, miss. I'm sorry. I don't know what you mean. Where's my husband? Where am I? Why is that man tied up? Ah, he's an assistant. He can quickly explain to you how this will all work. Hmm. If I should catch you, this happens. Wow. Oh, what? In that Understand room? Understand the rules now? She was in that room? What the hell? Where's my husband? Somewhere you wouldn't know about. Where's my husband? He can't save you. He's in my grasp. It's up to me if he lives or dies. Now run, Miss Bayring. The game begins, and I am it. So, I was on the inside of the cell. Yep. Ready to be happy? Hope so. Uh... I don't think I need anything over here. Stupid phone. Can't grab the thing either. Oh yeah, you have a key, don't you? Yeah. And I can go down if I want to. And this is broken? No, it's locked in inside, right? So go around, I go around. Oh, yeah, that's the room with the cloth. Thanks for the letter. Keith, did something happen? Yeah. That big head knocked me out cold. You did? What? No wonder you took so long. Are you okay? I could have died easily, but more importantly... No. Forget it. Alright. Gotta save David.
gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Oh, now. Oh, yeah, I can see. Uh, this one. Just to get some extra. I'm gonna go all the way back to the other building. Just go. Grab it. Stand up, David. No, oh, this is a little one. Video camera. Wait, what? More fashion video camera. Oh. Have I ever been in this room before? I don't think so. Yeah, play it. At last, I finally got a hold of you. Mm, that's not good. Oh dear, hurt all over. But what else could I do? You just wouldn't stop running, miss, no matter how much I hurt you. But ah, uh, well, our game of tags come to a close now. Yes, you can't outrun the scary, scary boogeyman. Are you relieved it's over, or are you still scared? Well, madam, do you want to run? You're an unbelievable idiot. <laughs> Say again. I called you an idiot. You thought I was running because I was scared. You think I'm scared of you? Maybe you've spent too long in your little closet world to understand. You've convinced yourself that women and children are all scared of you. <laughs> what were you planning once you caught me? Kill me? And then what? You'd go to kill Keith, right? You told me you had Keith in your hands. Whether he'd live or die was up to me. I guess that was true. And all this time you've been foolishly chasing after me. You could never kill him. I'm weak. I can't be as strong as Keith is. But there is something I can do in all my weakness. If I can keep your attention away from Keith by running all the time, I'll run to the ends of the earth. You poor, stupid little boogeyman. You really are such a child. You just love bullying anyone weaker than you. Go ahead. Have fun in your little world. Call yourself a villain, a monster. But I'll never let you bring my husband into it. Don't you dare lay your hand on him! You talk too much. 
much, madam. I don't like that. <laughs> That's terrible. Yep. Let's hurry and look for Helena. She must be nearby. Must be. Keith? Keith! What are you doing? We have to hurry. Keith! Are you listening? Hey, what are you staring at? Are you asleep? Get a grip! Come on! He's out of it. <laughs> I'm awake. David, you look for Helena. She should be near. Huh? W what about you? W what are you gonna do? I'm gonna finish this. I'm going to go kill a monster. <laughs> That's it. So why is that there? Why does that have to be there? lights in the hall. Hmm. Why? The boogeyman will come. What kind of guy is this boogeyman? He has long nails and kidnaps kids. He lives in the closet. A kidnapper? Well, can't leave a guy like that on the loose. Hmm. All right. That'll give him a good beating. <laughs> hey, Boogie, you in there? No. What? The hey, let go. Uh oh. Dad? Uh oh. <laughs> Dad? Whew, it was a little tough, but I got him good. <laughs> no worries, son. Old Boogie won't come for you anymore. Oh, man. Really? Would I lie? Mm. Me and Mom are in the bedroom right there, you know. You still scared? <laughs> oh, need your stuff, Bunny, do you? Or should I read you a bedtime story? Maybe the ones with the fairies. <laughs> no, no way! I'm not a wuss, Dad. I can sleep by myself. <laughs> That's the spirit. Listen, Todd. If the boogeyman comes to get you again, Dad'll beat him up. I'm not gonna let anyone mess with you or Mom. Hmm. Cause you're a police officer? Cause I'm Dad. Good night, son. <laughs> Should I leave the light on? It's okay. I've got you and Mom. Good night. I love you. Don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on the good times. Blame it on the boogie. Have you ever thought about a detective? Thought you have an enemy? Who or what it is, you don't even know. Maybe it doesn't even exist. Maybe it's all in your head. But you know there's something tormenting you. Always making it so, so painful. You feel like the whole world's out to make you suffer. 
too troublesome to make an enemy of the whole world, right? So just making one enemy will do. I chose you as my enemy. Have I become yours? Mm -hmm. Oh well, either way, we're gonna settle this right here. Let's end this wonderful game now. Can you beat this final boss and take <laughs> back your beloved wife? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Boy, you're really having a blast, huh? What's so funny that you can be all smiles all the time? Total opposite of me. I don't remember the last time I laughed. But I guess we were pretty similar after all. In a sense, it was all a lie. You're always grinning ear to ear, but you're scared, aren't you? So you keep running. You can't go head to head with me. You and me are just acting. You're no scary monster. And I'm no paragon of justice. <laughs> Final boss? Ha! <laughs> a big baddie should be a pretty sly guy, shouldn't they? Yep. But taking hostages, always on the run, the only thing you can chase after is girls' rumps. <laughs> you know, I wasn't planning to do anything with you. As long as the elders were safe, I was fine leaving you be. I'd secure your hostages and scram, then just leave you to the local police. Because I'm not chasing you, you just keep running from me. Sure. What I'm really chasing after, sorry, but it ain't you. That's right, it's not you. You're my enemy, spare me the sleep talk. Why would I make my enemy a dunce who just sneaks away, a coward who hides in the closet? And threatens kids. Hmm. And your enemy? Not me either. You've got a lot more enemies. If you go to the slammer, you're gonna be a real popular guy. I can tell. But this is a great chance. No hostages to get in the way. <laughs> no one watching. So I can do whatever I like with you. <laughs> Detective. Criminal. That doesn't matter now. You've done the number one thing to get on my bad side. You chased after my wife's rum. <laughs> that alone is enough reason for me to beat you down. Don't you think, Boogie? No, we scared now. Um. Can't afford to laugh anymore, can you? Back to your closet, boogeyman. You don't have what it takes to make it over here. Okay, yeah. You gotta be kidding me. He does hit harder though. Jesus. He's like, should I be running away from him? Or should I try to fight? Wait, what? Wait, three at a time. Give me three. Come on, I thought you were tougher than that. Okay, so that's what I was supposed to do. I was so confused. Come on, I thought you were tougher than that. Okay, I was, I was almost dead. <laughs> Where do you think you're going, Lance? I'm gonna find them. They've been gone way too long. Mm -hmm. 
Did you forget what he said? It'll be a burden on him to move around on our own. Well, then after all said and done, we'll tell him we did just what he said. Of course, you might have all gone stone cold by that time. Don't joke about things like that. Sounds like a joke to you? Uh, we got two, maybe three corpses around here? What part of don't, don't you get? Stop, you two! Don't fight! We'll go search together. I'll lead the way. Sophie and Shirley, you hold hands. And Lance, you watch the rear. P Papa! You really want to go? Yes, we'll be all right together. And there's something I'm curious about. What's that? What is that? This whole incident may just be a great big farce. Uh huh. What do you mean? Let's be going. Okay. Helena, where are you? Helena? Elena. There. David! Are you okay? I... That man knocked me out. I woke up here. I was unconscious the whole time. Keith! Helena! Keith! Where are you? Always on the run, huh? But marijuana addicts can move better than you. <laughs> What's in that big head of yours? Huh? Brendan? Did I miss something? <laughs> you lose. What? Detective. After all that? After all that? You, you're Brendan? Why? Stop moving around! Keith! Helena! We have to stop the bleeding. Lids! Richard, help me out. S Sophie, find something to tie him with. Keith! <laughs> Got you. Keith? You... Helena... When we get home, let's finish our conversation. No more running. No! Keith, stay with me, please! Keith! Yeah, I watched the ending. Why would I, watch, why would I not watch the ending? <laughs> Uh, the servants and Stevie. Ten people died, all told. I'm sure glad to be alive now. Feeling glad to even have air to breathe. Listen, don't you say a word about all this. Especially not to your co-workers. If it takes money to shut your yap, I'll pay any price. Ho ho ho! Bribery! Where's that money coming from? My own pockets. Listen... You guys can distort the truth all you want, and I won't say a peep, because that's freedom of the press. But this? This is different. I've got no tolerance for people pointing and laughing at a wounded friend. Do I gotta tell you again? I'm not a gossip guy. <laughs> I hate cops, sure, but I hate gossip too. 
I won't ask for money, and I won't say a peep, because I'm grateful to the guy. So quit hounding me. But, as an involved party, I've got a right to know what happened there. I just can't wrap my head around it. Yeah, you me both. I talked to Brendan at dinner. Heard he got tired of the musty old castle and ran to Hollywood. Had a lot of fun in the movie biz. So what was the motive? Guy's gone silent. Come on. Sounds like he convinced you he was a goody two-shoes. But I bet you heard a different story in Hollywood. Now that's the kind of thing your lot should be writing about. Nobody knows people's past, usually. But it's easy to fool you into thinking otherwise with a little acting. And once you know somebody's past, you can lead him by the nose. He tricked you all, and tried to kill you. What a farce. Not sure of the motive yet, but he was pretty systematic about it all. Spent a ton of cash beforehand to check up on all the tour attendees. Even did a background check on me. Huh. On you? Why? Cause I was going to be on that tour. No wonder I thought he knew me. The hell, so he just researched us? That's the oldest trick in the book for us, saying, I know all about you. It makes you superior to the other person, so you can uh, control them. Then they freak out and have to submit. He knew that tactic well. Seeing right through people without any tricks. That's what makes a real monster, ain't it? In his case, he just used money and connections to dig up people's past and played the part of a monster. But the research wasn't to select candidates, so he just picked randomly. Damn, was he just in it for fun? Now, my turn to ask questions. What you tell me is the only way I can figure out this incident. Give me anything you got. First, Brendan, or Bookie Rapper, what kind of man was he? How should I say it? I suppose he had no emotion, that's how I saw him. He said such terrifying things without a care. He hardly showed any human feelings. He really was like a monster. Keith told me he was a real jester. Jester? Absolutely not. I would have much preferred if he were at least a little silly. He was a very disturbing, terrifying man. He was totally calm as he did awful things. Richard, you seem to have a suspicion he might be Brendan. Why do you think that? When my daughter went missing, and I panicked thinking that man might have taken her, Keith told me something. What did I say? <laughs> this was the kind of person who would show corpses as decoration. So if he did take Sophie, he'd show off proof of it. Meaning she was still safe. Uh -huh. Luckily enough, I didn't see them, but indeed, evidently, there were many dead bodies left around. As Keith said, my daughter hadn't fallen into his grasp. He was correct in his assumption. That made me realize something unusual about what he'd said. Keith said he saw the moment Brendan's neck snapped, and his corpse was quickly dropped into the basement. Uh -huh. Isn't that odd? Why did he quickly put Brendan's corpse out of sight? Why did he treat him differently from the other victims? True. Because he didn't want you investigating it. He's got some keen insight. I'll give him that. So you suspected this was a farce plotted by Brendan? N no, well, I just... I suggested that since Keith hadn't checked the corpse, he might still be alive. Hmm. I only wanted to believe there was a chance he was alive. I had no conviction about the rest. So I didn't speak about it to Keith. I wouldn't dare risk throwing him off with my amateur opinion. Not to mention we didn't know whether his wife was safe. Apparently, Keith saw the moment Brendan's head came off, actually. Yeah. Was it... a doll? I don't know. Right you are. Packed with neat little blood packs, it seems. Ha! <laughs> Brendan was hung upside down and had his mouth taped up, and it was dark enough to be hard to tell who's who. Just dressing him up the same way made Keith assume it was him. Interesting. On top of all those flashy rave lights, he dropped the corpse down below so it was impossible to check it closer. And since Keefe saw the tour conductor killed right after that, of course, he'd think Brendan was killed too. If I'd said something, 
Maybe this could have been resolved sooner, but I was paralyzed with fear. I was only worried about my daughter. Even when Keith was running all over the place for us. Don't worry about it. Keith did all that because he wanted to. That's all. He's deeply glad you're all safe. Now, little lady, can we hear from you too? Hear what? Anything. What you thought. What you noticed. Well, I knew he was a fake. Because I've met the real Boogeyman. <laughs> he definitely did. Sophie, stop it. Not this tale again. Come on. Fine, if you say so, Papa. Guess I'm not saying a word. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Meeting the real Boogeyman sounds pretty juicy. Can you tell me more? Maybe not really met. He just touched my shoulder. But his hand was cold as ice. Right away, I knew it wasn't human. Mm -hmm. That guy's hands were human, though. They had warmth, so I knew he was just a regular guy. Mm -hmm. Huh. So Boogeyman's hands are cold, eh? Uh, tell that to my little squirt. <laughs> Anything else you noticed? I feel like you might get angry if I say this. I won't. Tell me. That guy had this cold and emotionless air. Like you couldn't tell what he was thinking at all. It reminded me of Mr. Keith. A little. Hmm. You still think that way now? Not even. Because Mr. Keith got really mad at me. He was like, Don't worry your papa ever again! Mm -hmm. Red paint? On his... face? It was nothing like that. It was all red from blood spurts, though. Really? Keith told me he had a weird paint on a torn paper bag. And one more thing. Did you see any red graffiti in the castle? Or many monsters? Hear any phones ringing? Nope. Oh, no, Keith. I didn't. Mr. Hoover, you're colorblind, if I recall. Maybe you just couldn't see the paint. Yeah, but it's white and pink I get mixed up. I can see red just fine. Well, uh, and you, miss? I saw quite a bit of the castle, but none of that. Did you hear that from the others? No, nope, just from Keith. Don't get me wrong. I don't think you're lying. The others said they saw nothing, too. But then, that makes Keith the one talking nonsense. I don't think Keith is necessarily lying. What do you mean? Because people don't always see the same things you do. Yep, coming from your experience, coming from self experience, yep. <laughs> Thanks for the assistance, you two. Sorry about calling you in two weeks after the fact. It's been two weeks? Sheesh. Is not everything settled yet? The police there are in the middle of their investigation. My role is just to assist. I'm gonna report your testimonies to them, and that's that. I'll be off now. Eric, take them to the entrance. When our son died, I thought my own life was over too. I couldn't think about anything. Nothing had any taste. But tears would suddenly come anyway. I don't remember anything about what I did back then, but I do remember one thing. That Keith was always at my side. When I wheeled and shouted, he'd hug me, stroke my hair, say it was okay. Eventually, I adjusted to life without our son. I found I could laugh again. But when I got my own emotions back, I realized Keith had stopped laughing. I had been broken, and so had Keith. Over time, I was able to heal, but he didn't. He was still stuck in the moment of Todd's death. Mm -hmm. He was always supporting me, so he 
never faced up to himself. I struggled to be at least a little stronger. Next time, I would protect him, since I wanted him to laugh again. But I couldn't. I, I couldn't repeat anything to Keith. And I realized I was a burden on him that would keep him from ever walking again. So, even if we're far apart, as long as he can laugh again, then that's the best choice I can make. My wife always brings me more milk before I go to bed. Huh. And last Farmer's Day, my little squirt tried cooking me a meal. Huh. I definitely don't need milk to get to sleep. And the kid's cooking, and I'll be blunt, it ain't good. But I'm glad for it. Usefulness and collateral don't mean a thing with this stuff. Keith didn't stay close to you expecting something in return. That's just what he wanted to do. You guys have got too much sympathy. You don't mind getting hurt for the sake of the other. But can't you notice that one of you being hurt hurts the other? You've just been getting more and more wounded as you go along. Mm. You're propping Keith up too, Helena. He can fight day after day. Because he knows you're waiting at home, as much as I tease him about it. Don't think of yourself as baggage. Depend on him as much as you need. That's what he wants, too. Keith grabbed my hand and smiled, even though he was stabbed and wounded. And what do you say? Got you. Because he finally got what makes him happiest. But, man, too much discrepancy between your guys' testimonies and Keith's. Just how am I going to report this to their department? Hey, Helena, he went back home from the hospital today, right? Can I come talk with him now? I'm sorry. Before he goes back home, there is a place he's going to visit. And I'm planning to head there myself. Keith. And I have the tears. I've always wanted to cry like this. I never forgot about him. Not for a single day. Ever since he died, I was scared. I felt like even the slightest sign of weakness would make it all crumble. I acted like I felt nothing. Like nothing disturbed me. I thought then I might be able to fool everyone, even myself. It was so stupid. I was broken a long time ago. It was all garbage, but I acted like a champion of justice. It always felt off. Whoever I was working for, I never felt repaid. And I saw you were safe, and you came up to me. Finally, I felt happy again. Acting strong just made me weak. It was pointless. Todd would never forgive his father staying broken forever because I promised I'd protect his mom. I'll take off the blindfold. I'm gonna laugh, even if it's at a stupid TV show. If I'm pissed, I'll get mad. And if I'm sad, I'll cry. First, I guess they'll have to be counseling. There's something seriously wrong with my head, it seems like. It's gonna be a busy time. Yeah. It's gonna be so busy, I won't be able to do it alone. Helena, I don't think I can deal with just being a good loser. 
I want a chance. Let me chase after you. Let me get down on my knees. You're the only one I want waiting for me. There's no need for a chance. Didn't I tell you? Divorce or decide. I've decided. Haven't you too? <laughs> we only ever have one umbrella, so we hold it together. And it's fine if we get a little wet, because... It'll soon be sunny again. Happy end. Come rain, come shine. How many times have we come here again? I have no clue. Oh, five, I think. Ugh, I can't stand it. We've told them the same story over and over. There's gonna be rumors at school about Sophie frequenting the police station. <laughs> now, Sophie, don't complain. The police are doing their best. And it's been a month now. This must be the last time. I'm sure of it. Does my princess require a beverage to quell her temper? What shall it be, your majesty? Orange juice. Yay. <laughs> Very well. I'll go buy some. Thanks. Seventeen. <laughs> hey, when those dogs attacked me, you saved me, right? That was the real one? I can't imagine any other reason those dogs would fall asleep so quickly. 
Mais ouais. Oh. Oh. Thanks. Wow. <rire> wow. I'm, um... I'm having a great time lately. I'm getting along great with Papa and Anne. And Reagan. Well, if she wants to get along, I'll give her a chance. Things are so much better than when I carried all my burden myself. Now I know there's someone always looking out for me. Sometimes I really miss you. You're doing okay, right? How about the other fairies? You know, I... <laughs> Sorry to butt in. <laughs> ah! Hold on, wait. You got the wrong idea. I I'm not a weirdo or anything, okay? Don't touch me. Brats with a thing for daydreaming aren't the most comfortable people to be around. <laughs> I I'm not daydreaming. C keep it between us, but I've met some. some fairies. Hmm. <laughs> So you don't believe me? Nope. No, I do. I met one when I was a kid, too. Hmm. Really? Yeah. This hobo in the area always had a head full of dandruff, so I called him the Dandruff Fairy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I've got a co-worker who eats non-stop cup noodles. The Cup Noodle Fairy. Want to be introduced? Dude. Why won't you believe me? A 37-year-old who believes in fairies ain't exactly socially adjusted, don't you think? But hey, Seven. they do exist. Put a request to one of your fairy friends to give me some wings. Big, fluffy pink ones. What do you use those for? Just want some wings. Why not? Mr. Detective wanna fly away. <laughs> huh. You angry? Yeah, she pissed. Phew. <laughs> Better step off. One of your friends might cast a spell to turn me into a fluffy white kitty. Oh, well, you can only make you go to sleep as far as I know. Maybe instead of filling your head with stupid fantasies, fill in that chest a little. It's so pathetic I can't even look at it. Uh, dude, she's already 17! <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Haven't been able to sleep since last night, even though I'm sleepy. It's weird. Ooh, I forgot. You can also do that too. Did you take any medicine? Yep. Anxiolytics. Sleeping pills. Guess they're not working. <laughs> Let's talk to each other then. Before you know it, you'll be sound asleep. And it'll be morning. Oh, we ain't gonna go to sleep ever again. <laughs> don't you need to sleep? You don't have to stay up for me. It's fine. I'll stay with you until you're snoozing away. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Maybe some exercise would have been better. <laughs>